So I, I don't, I don't remember this at all. Found it. In cherished memory of Berwick James Longman and John James Longman. And that's my, my grandfather and my dad. And my grandfather died in 1979 and then my dad in 1996. And they both took their own lives. And it's weird standing here and seeing, I'm named after both of them, Beric James, John James, seeing my name on that grave. My grandfather discovered he had bone cancer and sadly shot himself. When I was nine, my father, who had schizophrenia, set light to his flat and died. Now in my twenties, I myself get bouts of depression. How, how do we inherit, do we inherit mental health issues? I'd like to know. So, is it in our genes? This is DNA, the genetic instructions each of us has which store all our biological information. These strands are made up of about 20,000 genes. Genes are essentially codes which control the development of everything in our bodies. So how do they affect mental health? I'm Catherine Lewis. I'm Professor of Statistical Genetics at King's College London. For mental health disorders, and actually most physical disorders, most of the diseases that are a real problem for us in society, a problem for the health service, are not about a single gene, but they're about a collection of genes. And that collection so far includes at least nine genes in which some changes are more common in people with depression, 20 in those with bipolar disorder, and 108 in people who have schizophrenia. Um, I remember him as being very kind of eccentric. He was very cool. He always wore a denim shirt and like tight denim jeans and everyone thought he was really dashing. But we do, we, we idolise people once they're gone, I think. And if I do have parts of his personality, I think that's really great. Um, and I suppose that's kind of a catch-22. Am I like him in a good way, but am I also like him in a, in a bad way, in, in a way that he suffered? And it's at the crux of when I get down, I think, is this happening to me because of my dad? And then it stops you being able to get over it because you think, well, this is meant to happen to me. I'm meant to feel this way. There isn't a way out. So, what about a brother and sister? One has mental illness and one doesn't. I'm Johnny. I've been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I'm Lucy. I'm Johnny's twin sister and I am not bipolar. When I have a bad episode, I'm not able to drag myself out of bed. There's lots of physical aspects uh, of, of um, feeling what people are trying to call mentally unwell here. Okay, It's to do with your overall mood, which affects your whole body as well. It's also when you, throw that in there. you do see the world physically darker. Mm. It's a weird thing. Yeah. Colours are less bright somehow. It's a very strange thing to explain to people. It's almost like a sen your sen all of your senses. I'd like to talk about your, the diagnosis and what that meant for you, to hear that perhaps you had bipolar and you had something which your mother had. Oh my goodness, there's so many emotion different emotions and intellectual responses that you go through. At the time I, I cried with relief. I'm my mother's child, but I feel like my own condition is unique. And She's been diagnosed with bipolar, and so have I. But I feel like they're not the same conditions. It's hard to explain because every every mental health condition is unique to that person itself. A bit like our own personality is all unique. When people talk about genetics and mental health, 
they also talk a lot about the environment and people's upbringing. What's the relationship between your genes and the environment? We know that, that all these disorders have both a genetic and an environmental contribution to the nature or nurture and the balance of the importance of those varies across different diseases it'll vary in individuals. It seems having a parent with a mental illness can increase your risk of developing one too through your genes and your environment. If you have a depressed parent you're twice as likely to experience depression with bipolar you're four times more at risk and in schizophrenia, which my dad had, it's eight times. Over the years, you've seen your mum and what she's had to deal with and your brother. Do you ever ask why not me? Why didn't that yeah. happen to me? Um, yes, I think when I was younger, it was a, um, there would be a slight anxiety of, will it be me? Even though I think at the same time, I always knew it wouldn't be. What do you worry about, hope for, think about, about the next generation in your family? When you're projecting to be a father, you think, oh God, I'm not going to be able to do this, not going to be able to do that. Most, uh, all guys that I've spoken to worry about being a dad and, you know, then it happens and then you're just in it. But I did think, yeah, can I be a father if, I, if I'm someone that has mental health problems? What if this comes back again? Uh... Uh, can I not be a good, good dad? But um, no, that, you'd be a better dad for it. Yeah, that's that. I think that's the feeling. You know, awareness of what good mental health is is half the battle to any of it. And I think, given what our family's gone through, we have a very good awareness of that. And I like to think that my children, from a very young age, are being taught an awareness of what good mental health is. But I do think about it, and I think it would be silly not. To to be prepared for the fact that one of my children may, may live with a mental health issue. In making this film, I, I, I've discovered that it wasn't just that he set fire to his flat, that he, he threw himself out the window as well. And that was, that was a bit of a shock. I just felt terribly sad. I just felt terribly sad that he was, I just think about him on his own in, in the flat. And, you know, he wasn't able to, to get out of the place he was in, in his head. Scientists are working on new ways of dealing with mental illness, ways that weren't available to my dad. I've been given unique access to a new brain training programme at King's College London. Doctors hope this new technique could stop people with depression like me from having repeated lows. I'm Dr Roland Zahn, I'm a senior clinical lecturer and consultant psychiatrist at King's College London. In the brain is where biology and psychology meet because the brain changes in response to your learning experiences and that's why the changes we've, we've found in people with depression, um, I think they're reversible because, you, the, because connectivity in the brain is a learning signal, so it should be possible to relearn that. Scientists highlighted a specific emotion, guilt, because they say people at risk of depression often feel guilt more strongly than others. When they do, connections in their brain are overactive, much more than in people who don't have depression. The researchers therefore hope that training your brain to not feel guilt could help prevent depressive episodes. I've given the team some trigger words to make me feel guilty. Shall we start? That's something a lot of depressed people feel, including me, when we're low. As they appear on the screen in front of me, my brain reacts. I'm then told to think about forgiving myself to try and think that reaction away. So James has is started his second training run and we can see the thermometer going up again because he seems to be doing very well in bringing down the level of connections between these regions, the connectivity. So I've just had um, my results here at King's from the MRI scan that I had and they just emailed it to me and it says it's good news. Um, They've established that the connectivity in my brain, as they would expect with someone with depression, was quite high before. But then they put me through the training and I was able to 
lower that connectivity, which means I was able to reduce the feeling of guilt. It's pretty amazing. They've managed to find a way to prove through science that feeling self-forgiveness can actually heal your brain. I'm Anne Longman and I'm James's mother. When an episode comes on, um, the, the symptoms are obvious. Mm. And I remember you were present once um, and you said to me, Mommy, Mommy, Daddy's being horrible to me. Do you remember that? How old was I then? Uh, oh dear, five maybe. Because he was hearing voices. He was hearing voices. And, and I remember he said, this goes for you, James, as well. So that frightened you. It is very frightening. Him and me together did that frighten that you? That did. And that's why uh, it, our family life developed the way it did, because I felt my duty was to keep you safe. Tell me about the day he died. What do you remember about the day that he died? I remember receiving a phone call and I just went into total shock and then I burst into sobs and I couldn't stop sobbing. I felt I'd been a failure and I hadn't saved him. Do you remember being at school and coming to tell me about it? I do very much so. You were a lovely little boy in your, in your sort of royal blue blazer and you sat on my knee and I can still see your little feet swinging. Oh, Mummy, why? And you were in shock, actually. You weren't crying, you were in shock. And I was told by matron that uh, at night you would cry and, and um, punch the pillow saying, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. I didn't know that. Mm. I was nine. You were nine. Ne uh, yes, nearly ten, yes, yes. We both suffer with depression. Yes. Do you think that there's something in our family? Mental illness? Of a lot. All the time. Because there are uh, many examples of it um, in his family. And maybe in mine, I don't know. The worry I had was that you would develop a psychotic illness like your, like your father. So when you look at Daddy, and you look at me. Yes. Sometimes your, your, your eyes are a bit of a giveaway, your look. I can see that you're troubled. But he would be very proud of you now, very, very proud, because you're doing all the things that he would never have been able to achieve. So what have I learned? Life experience and what we inherit from our parents both play an important role. The possibility of mental health illness can be passed on through the generations, but it's life events, and maybe sometimes just luck, that determines who's affected. And scientists are getting closer to figuring out how that works. I don't know what might happen in the future. I don't know if my kids will feel the way I do sometimes. But I know more about what my family's dealt with and somehow I feel closer to my dad. I feel more positive. Mental health illness might run in my family, but the consequences don't have to. <laughs>